Hello everyone, it's Inka and I'm here today to share with you some of the kitchen gadgets I've been testing out lately. Now as we know, there are a lot of gadgets and gizmos out there for us to use in the kitchen, a lot of it which isn't maybe entirely necessary, so I decided to see for myself if I could find some that would be a good fit. Now most of this small collection of gadgets was actually taken from the many recommendations you guys sent through a while ago. I just picked out the ones I was the most curious about, but there's also one or two in here that were recommended by the About To Eat team. So let's get started. First up, we have this dusting wand, which interestingly enough is actually shaped kind of like a wand. So to my potter heads out there, this might appeal to you. So the idea of this wand is to help you dust your desserts or plates more finely, more evenly in a controlled manner, essentially creating the perfect dust distribution. You will. I will say this wand did give me a lot more control than I usually do by restricting the amount and area I'm dusting, which came in especially handy when it came to giving my desserts that final dusting, that final sprinkle, whether it's powdered sugar on banana muffins or this plum powder that I dusted onto my mango shaved ice sorbet. I can also imagine that it would be extra effective when it comes to stenciling shapes on desserts. So I'm super curious to give that a try in the future. But overall, I will say, I feel like the fun factor of this won me over more so than the necessity. There's just something a little magical about it. Next in line is this small angled measuring cup that was recommended by Adam. He really liked it for cocktails and pouring small amounts of stuff. I've actually also seen this being used in my local neighborhood coffee shop, so that was the first thing I tested. As you can see with my avocado coffee here, as well as with this dirty iced matcha latte, one of my favorite caffeine overloads, perfection. So I do have a regular sized measuring cup at home, which is great, but I feel like this small measuring cup kind of allows me to do a better job when it comes to precision. I also really liked how I could see the exact measurement from the top thanks to this slanted ridge here which is great as opposed to having to bend down and break my back to check every now and then. It also came in really handy when it came to making some chimichurri and I just needed to add a few tablespoons of red wine vinegar, made it super easy, super efficient. I didn't even have to grab an extra container for it. This is definitely something that I feel like I'd be using a lot more in the future. Then we have this strawberry stem remover, which as the name suggests, has one purpose and one purpose only, which is to remove the stems from strawberries. It actually looks a little bit like a strawberry here. If Pixar made a strawberry, maybe this is what it'll look like. I'm not usually the biggest fan of tools that only have one mission in life. But considering how much I love and work with strawberries in my kitchen, this actually came in pretty handy. It was actually surprisingly useful when it came to prepping my fruit. I had some trouble at first trying to figure out how far I should be piercing the berries. I think I went a little too deep on this one. But once I got the hang of it, I was able to make them look fairly even. And the best part was knowing that I was getting the maximum meaty part of the fruit. I ended up with so many more strawberries than I had originally intended that I made both some strawberry rhubarb jam and also this lovely strawberry cream cake. But to answer the question of is it a necessity, maybe not, unless you're somebody who works with strawberries a lot or if you're just somebody who would prefer not to have to cut off the tops yourself. Next up, we have this beautiful set of pizza dough proving containers. So as somebody who works a lot with dough at home, I've actually been struggling to find the perfect containers to hold them. I've been using kind of just like the quart containers or the odd glassware I have lying around at home. So what immediately drew me to these containers was how they're made specifically for dough balls. They're made out of silicone with these round bottoms that actually helped my dough keep their shape even as they were proofing. The containers are also stackable, which is amazing news for my tiny New York fridge, which has been struggling during this time. It's also really flexible. So as you can see, when it came to releasing the dough, it really did just come out retaining that exact round shape. I was a little bit worried about it drying out, but it turns out that that wasn't a problem at all. My dough proved perfectly. You can still see those air bubbles in there. And I was able to make this flatbread with some creme fraiche, chili oil, and a sprinkle of cilantro that was very delicious. 
I was also able to store a variety of things in these containers, so it's not just dough, it can also hold sauces, other ingredients or toppings, and apparently you can bake in these as well. So that's my next adventure. But I really, really do enjoy this set of containers. They are what I've been looking for for a long time, so to the person who recommended them to me, thank you. Then we have this pie bird. Yes, you heard that right, this is a pie bird, a bird that sits in pie. I hear these used to be really popular in the mid late 19th century, but essentially the pie bird is a hollow pie funnel. It's made out of ceramic and it is shaped like a bird for fun, mostly the bird part. Its main purpose is to release steam, a lot of that moisture through its beak, which then allows the filling to keep from bubbling over and to make for a crispier crust that doesn't sink. So it's especially useful when it comes to double crusted pies, something that I tend to avoid because of how easily you can end up with soggy crusts or pie bottoms. But I made a blueberry pie this time and I just kept this little guy's head poking through the middle like a bird hatching from a pie. It's basically art and it worked. The jam did bubble out a tiny bit but my pie came out with a beautifully cooked top crust and bottom crust, which was super important to me. Even the bottom crust had a crispness that I honestly was not expecting at all. And while yes, you can easily cut slits in the top crust to achieve the same purpose, I feel like the pie bird really does a lot more for the bottom crust, ensuring that same crispiness. And truly, I kind of just love the way it looks overall. It's both functional and very charming. The last thing on this list are these burger serving trays that were also recommended by Adam. These are also known as eighth sheet pans, so they're fairly small, but even then they can fit quite a bit. Right away though, I was able to put them to good use when I was making French toast because I needed a container deep enough to hold my egg milk mixture, but shallow enough for my bread to dip in, and these trays were perfect for that purpose. Which means these would also be perfect for breadcrumb coating purposes, like if you're making katsu, fried pork chops. They're also the perfect size to hold ingredients without taking up too much space on the counter, like these roasted butternut squash I was about to puree, these pork chop slices I was prepping. But really when it came to mising for my meals, it ended up being just the right fit to hold everything I needed and it was super easy to transfer them around the kitchen from the counter to the stovetop, where they can then act as a stovetop utensil rest. So they're truly just multifunctional in every way. But if you ask me what my favorite thing about this is, it's the fact that they fit perfectly in my toaster oven. That to me is the cherry on top. It truly made my day and oh, the world of possibilities we have just unlocked here. It's great. But really, with how much use I was able to get out of these burger serving trays, I feel like they could be useful for everyone in more ways than one. That's about it for my little adventure with these kitchen gadgets. I found a lot of these to be very useful for me, but I am somebody who works with food quite a bit, literally 24 hours, so I will also take that with a grain of salt. That said, I hope you found something useful for you today. If you have any other kitchen gadget recommendations, leave them in the comments below. Thank you for being here and I will see you in the next video. Bye!